Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned, the drone biz gets long-awaited new regulations. Also, Alphabet Wing doesn't seem too happy with proposed drone regulations, and a drone pilot might receive a $182,000 proposed fine. Welcome to the Air News Network's Airborne Unmanned program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned, in partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. Hi, I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. We have a packed episode today filled with the latest news, so let's start with the drone biz gets long-awaited new regulations. The FAA has released final rules for UAVs. The new rules will require remote ID of drones and allow operators of small drones to fly over people and at night under certain conditions. These new rules come at a time when drones represent the fastest growing segment in the entire transportation sector. With currently over 1.7 million drone registrations and over 200,000 FAA certificated remote pilots, remote ID will help mitigate risks associated with expanded drone operations such as flights over people and at night, and both rules support technological and operational innovation and advancements. Remote ID provides identification of drones in flight as well as the location of their control stations, providing crucial information to our national security agencies and law enforcement partners and other officials charged with ensuring public safety. Airspace awareness reduces the risk of drone interference with other aircraft and people and property on the ground. The operations over people and at night rule applies to Part 107 operations. The ability to fly over people and moving vehicles varies depending on the level of risk a small drone operation represents to people on the ground. Operations are permitted based on four categories. The rule also allows the operations at night under certain conditions. After these messages, the FAA issues restrictions involving DOD facilities. I'll tell you which one after these messages. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit FlySkyLeader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. Swift Fuels proudly introduces the Forever Avgas STC. One simple upfront purchase entitles the Forever STC certificate holder to receive all current and future Avgas STCs that the FAA issues to Swift Fuels. The best part? It's priced today at only $100, and the prepaid certificate never expires. Get your Forever Avgas STC today at SwiftFuelsAvgas.com. Welcome back. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. Transport Canada to acquire a remotely piloted aircraft system. In order for Transport Canada to continue effectively delivering its National Aerial Surveillance Program, it is important that the department has the equipment it needs to keep Canadian waters safe and to monitor pollution. Anita Anand, Minister of Public Services and Procurement, and the Minister of Transport, Mark Garneau, announced that the Government of Canada has awarded a $36 million contract to Elbit Systems for the acquisition of a remotely piloted aircraft system or drone. FAA issues restrictions on UAS operations at DOD facilities. FAA has announced UAS airspace restrictions over additional national security sensitive locations, effective on December 30th. In cooperation with its federal partners, the FAA will restrict UAS operations in the airspace over two locations. The first facility is Rock Island Arsenal located between Davenport, Iowa and Rock Island, Illinois. The second facility is Biometric Technology Center in Clarksburg, West Virginia. Restrictions on those Department of Defense facilities are to address concerns about drone activity over security sensitive facilities. EASA publishes regulatory framework for drone service deliveries. 
He also has published the full regulatory framework setting the parameters for drone services such as parcel delivery in urban areas, railway and power line inspections, or delivery of essential supplies into crisis zones. The framework enables UAS operations in urban environments categorized as medium risk in the specific category. The standards are the result of a proposed published in July and take into account the comments received by stakeholders. Standards for the operations characterized by a high risk in the specific category are scheduled to be published by IASA in 2021. FLIR Systems acquires Altavian. Altavian is a Gainesville, Florida manufacturer of SUAS for defense and public safety customers. Altavian UAS users are provided with decision support and intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance capabilities. Thanks to the Altavian's airframes integrating multiple sensors, including FLIR thermal technology. Founded in 2011, Altavian designs and manufactures Group 1 UAS platforms for long or short range operations. That was our Unmanned Minute. Now let's return to the rest of the news. Alphabet's Wing doesn't seem too happy with proposed drone regulations. Wing, an Alphabet company, wants to be a major player in the drone delivery and other associated businesses. So far, they've built a small, lightweight aircraft and navigation system that they believe capable of delivering small packages, including food, medicine, and household items directly to homes in minutes. Created in 2012, Wing has conducted more than 100,000 flights across three continents. But now the new regulations have been proposed and Wing is speaking up. Wing notes in a recent blog post that remote identification is a crucial technology that can provide the identity and location of a drone, validate transparent and safe operation for governments, law enforcement, community members, and others alike. With this new rulemaking, the FAA has had the opportunity to lead the world by adopting performance-based, technology-neutral remote identification regulations that support safety, privacy, inclusivity, and the widespread use of drones in the United States. But they also have some heartburn with the way the FAA has dealt with the matter, stating, Unfortunately, the final rule, unlike existing international standards, does not allow the use of equally effective network remote ID and requires all UAS, no matter the use case, to use broadcast RID. This approach creates barriers to compliance and will have unintended negative privacy impacts for businesses and consumers. Coming up, a drone pilot might get fined more than $150,000. I'll tell you why after the break. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher, or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. BLT is just another tick on your pre-flight checklist until you need it. Did you ever wonder what would happen if you had an engine failure over the mountains, marshland, or other dangerous terrain? Take to the skies confidently with the most reliable and highest performing ELTs and safety products on board that instantly mobilized life-saving search and rescue across the world. Read survivor stories from aviators and adventurers who survived life-threatening encounters thanks to ACR and Artec's life-saving technology. Luck favors the prepared at SurvivorClub.com. I believe that if people use the Landing Doctor Training Program, they will have less accidents and eventually their insurance will go down and they will make a superior pilot. We do personal limitation checklists, which is the most important reason you need to fly with limits. We do ground proximity awareness training, and we do this with a crosswind. We've been operating six Bristels for two years without one insurance claim. The Landing Doctor program is working, and you're gonna hear more about it. Welcome back. A drone pilot might get fined up to $182,000 for behaving badly. 
The FAA has proposed that fine, according to our friend, Jonathan Ruprecht. The story has been going around the internet recently. The FAA was gracious enough to allow him to obtain a copy of the proposed penalty letter, which went under much more detail as to the alleged violations they're citing him with. We are not going to call him out by name because he has more problems to deal with. But we are doing this story to educate the drone community on what can happen if you do not respect the federal aviation regulations. Now, you might be wondering how a simple drone flight could result in a $182,000 fine? Well, it wasn't just one flight. The proposed penalty letter lists at least 26 tons when the drone pilot flew around the Philadelphia area from December 2019 until August of last year. During those flights, the FAA is alleging that the pilot violated multiple regulations at the same time on each flight. This is how you can rack up such a high bill. That does it for our show today. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. You can also catch us on Roku, Fire TV. Just search for Air News or Airborne in the directory. We hope you enjoy the show. We'll see you next time.